Shalom, covering I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, September the 9th, 2018, and it is a very eventful uh, evening as things are heating up inside of Syria. Very troubling uh, information that we see that is coming outside of the nation right now. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, along with other uh, news from the United States, is reporting that the U.S. says Syria plans gas attack in rebel stronghold of Idlib. Chlorine assault would target Idlib in what could be decisive battle in a seven-year war, raising prospects for a new retaliatory strike as thousands flee. This is what the United States is now doing. They are countering the very words that Russia has been using uh, all along uh, since as far back as August the 25th. Uh, when the Russian news agency came out with this particular statement here, uh, which I'll play for you a clip here, it gives you the subtitles. Eight containers with chlorine and 80 cruise missiles are ready to stage a chemical provocation in the Syrian province of Idlib. It's the Russian Ministry of Defense that uncovered these plans. British intelligence agencies are embroiled in the preparation of this. The scenario is the same. The victims of the alleged chemical attack are alleged saved white helmets. Uh, and all this comes as another pretext for the U.S., Britain, uh, and France to strike at state facilities in Syria. Uh, this is something that Alexander Runeko is reporting on what has been revealed thus far by uh, the Russian, uh, it's actually Russia uh, Channel 1 in the uh, Russian province there, uh, the Russian Federation reporting that news on August the 25th. And this has continued to be the narrative coming out of Russia and Syria that the White Helmets are planning a staged uh, provocation that will be used in order to bring the United States and the coalition, their allies, into this war in Syria. Uh, we also have, too, though, as things are anteed up here, definitely looking at a biblical prophetic standoff. Uh, this is some of the f video footage from the Russian... Um, uh, Russia's own um, pardon me on the, Russia's own military drills going on in the Mediterranean I actually got this off of uh, one of the Russian news sites there in Russia there a lot of drills going off the coast of Syria right now uh, including which which was kind of odd Russian amphibious uh, launches on the coast of Syria there uh, with Russian troops pouring in in the Mediterranean. They were practicing this as uh, Russian forces came in on shore and of course uh, at least nearly a dozen Russian warships are there in the Mediterranean. I cannot help but think of the prophecy of uh, Jeremiah chapter 49 where it says there is trouble on the sea uh, and it cannot be quieted. So as we watch the situation that is unfolding in Syria, I am reminded that we are looking at a very serious situation, and not only a serious situation, but a situation that could become very prophetic uh, from a biblical prophecy standpoint. And it's all over uh, what many people have talked about before, the pipeline that they have wanted to build through Syria from the very beginning. The United States wanted to taking it up through uh, Turkey, and of course Russia wanting to work with the Syrian government to take it through Syria's port instead. Uh, but look at, look at this on your screen, guys. Russia doing a landing in their drill exercises in the country of Syria. I mean, this is almost as if Russia is planning on deploying a much larger contingent there in the country at a very rapid pace in order to uh, prepare for a much larger confrontation there on the ground inside of Syria. Uh, now we've been hearing some issues going on when it comes to a confrontation there in, in Syria and Israel will definitely not be idle if indeed the United States gets involved in this conflict. Israel will also be getting involved because Israel will be targeting uh, Iranian targets throughout the nation and it may even spill over into Iran itself. Well, I just have to wait and see how that goes on. The Jordanians will join Israel in a battle uh, to take out the Iranians inside of Syria. 
while Russia and Syria will be in direct conflict with the United States and the NATO allies. That's something that this could spiral out of control, that major of a conflict. And even as the United States has been flexing its own muscle in the south part of the region there, uh, Russia is also majorly flexing their own muscles, uh, showing that they have the capabilities as well to enter into this conflict. And speaking of that, I've noticed that these, these uh, particular amphibious uh, Russian military equipment has come on shore in Syria, but the thing is, is did they ever go back to their ships, or are they there to stay? It's another issue we have to think about. Now, besides that, we have also the Syrian military sending their own uh, convoy of forces to Idlib, uh, roughly is sharing these video footages here, huge, long convoy of tanks, armored vehicles, uh, headed to the Idlib province, as we have seen this and many others also going up for this final battle, this final showdown, uh, a show of force there by the Syrian government. Uh, although they have been really beaten down over the last seven years fighting these battles. But then we have this other big issue coming out of Turkey. And this is a photograph. Ankara, Turkish military presence in Idlib prevents a possible attack on that province. Turkey as well as moving in a massive uh, military force of their own, as you can see by this convoy, they are sending into the province there of Idlib. You know, we reported yesterday that there were 200 U.S. and U.K. forces trapped inside of Idlib. Maybe one reason why the Turks have not agreed to evacuate because they may be planning on working together to fight to try to keep Idlib from falling into the hands of the Syrian government. Uh, very troubling as this thing unfolds. President Trump has also, according to The Guardian, warned Syria, Russia, and Iran against reckless attack in Idlib. Uh, we see this. We also have that uh, Zero Hedge is now reporting Tyler Durden. U.S. says Assad has approved gas attack in Idlib, setting the stage for a major military conflict. So as I said, the U.S. is turning that table of the quote-unquote propaganda to say that uh, they have intelligence, Russia has intelligence, Syria has intelligence. They all have the same outcome. Chemical weapons are going to be used, but no matter which one you believe, they're going to definitely counter with a U.S.-led coalition against the Syrian government, which will also be targeted against Damascus. Uh, but this is not where it ends. The U.S. has already stepped up its own campaign. Russia is reporting today that U.S. jets strike Syrian town with banned white phosphorus bombs, says the Russian Defense Ministry. Uh, showing the photo images. I don't know if that's a stock photo or if that's an actual, no, it's actually from Getty Images on their website there that they're using, uh, but showing that they were actually uh, two F-15s, according to the uh, Russian RT report there, that the U.S. dropped white phosphorus in this region, a banned substance, uh, especially in, in civilian populated areas. We already know what happened in Raqqa with the U.S. coalition that left scores of human bodies, civilians, left in the rubble there, uh, after car carpet bombing happened there that have still been, uh, never been fully cleaned out. Uh, this article here on Sana, the army advanced further into the region of the Talal al Safa for another kilometer. This is down by al Suwaid. Let me give you kind of a little uh, a bird's eye view of al Suwaid. al Suwaid right here on your map here. That's down by the Jordanian border. So besides taking all the way up through here towards the Golan, now they're pushing back in this region here, trying to take more of that territory, headed towards Al Tanf, which when I saw the news that came out in Western media that Russian, Russia has threatened to take out the Al Tanf military base, I believe that that is a false news report because I had already seen where the Syrians had mentioned that they had sent a message to U.S. forces that they were going to start taking out ISIS militants in the area where the U.S. military base is at Al Tanf, which is right in this area here. By the way, I do stand corrected. I'd given you guys the other day, I'd shared with you the satellite image here, uh, and I was looking there, one friend there sent us a, a message about that, that that was actually the, uh, a place that could be used as a military base, but this is where they actually are inspecting vehicles coming into the country. That base is actually, though, right here in the same area, 
but it's just right over in here somewhere, and I forget exactly where that's at. Uh, uh, Lorenzo on Already Happened, he actually shows the video footage of it. It shows the drone base that is actually there. There is a runway that's been put in, and I don't know right off, uh, uh, just quickly being able to find it. I was just thinking that that was the one there. Uh, but that is not the case there, uh, and I don't want to give away specifically where they are at. I just I do know that uh, it is right in this area here, very close to that one place there. But this is where U.S. the U.S. military base is actually stationed in that area there in Altanf region there. Now, uh, jumping back over here though, where they're making these gains right here, uh, there. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, on the uh, Sana news there in Al Suwaid. They're also, the Russians are with them there. This particular image was associated with that on VK.com uh, there, and that is actually a Russian soldier that is actually on the ground with the Syrian soldiers there, something uh, you don't see very often in too many photographs, so I thought that was kind of interesting. I'll share that with you. But here's what's going on, guys, and I want to share this with you because I've told you from the very beginning, or not from the beginning, but more recently, how I believe that this whole battle for Syria and also Iran is all about the Silk Road. We know, though, that there has been for now, for since the very beginning of this battle, a lot of people have written how that this was over the uh, the uh, the oil and gas pipeline that would come from the Middle East up in that direction towards Turkey uh, through Syria in order to shorten the length of time that they can get the crude and gas to to go either into Europe or to be put on uh, freighters and sent to the United States. It's still part of the Silk Road Initiative. And that's what's really interesting right here uh, in this article here from back in October 2014. They're once again looking at this and how the whole Syrian war is about this oil and gas pipeline. Now, I just got some fresh information on this uh, from some sources that I do have about this war. And this is what I am being told. This is exactly why the battle is going on. Uh, the United States and their allies want the pipeline either to originally was to go through Turkey, uh, but now there is new intelligence that I've, that I've been shared with that this pipeline is going to be built and go into Israel and will be the oil will be exported from uh, either Haifa or somewhere in this area here and sent to the rest of the world. Again, it is part of the Silk Road initiative, which the whole purpose for the Silk Road was to shorten the amount of time in order to get products to other parts of the world. And that is why uh, this gas pipeline is so important. Uh, the Russians, the, Sy the Syrian government, President Bashar al-Assad said that he did not want to sign the deal with John Kerry because he said Russia had been a longtime ally and he had agreed with uh, President Putin to allow them to build the gas pipeline through his country and not the United States. Uh, and so I think because the tensions with Turkey is another big issue of why the gas pipeline would actually go to Israel. And it may be that it's split off. Maybe one goes to Turkey, one goes to, to Israel. Because after all, as we watch the developments that I've shared with you tonight, Turkey is still there to side with the United States. So no matter what Russia thinks, it's still siding with the U.S. in this battle for, for Syria. And, uh, and another thing too, this is definitely a new world order battle. Uh, and it is, we might say, okay, Putin is working with the new world order. Yes, he is. But there's still a battle for who controls the wealth of the new world order. And that's what these nations are battling this out over. The West and their allies want to control this oil and gas uh, because that's going to be the largest part of the world economy in a new world order. They want full control over it. Russia and their allies, uh, which mainly is uh, uh, Iran and, and Syria, uh, they want control over this oil pipeline so that they get the revenue from it. And this is why Russia has been willing to fight this battle with Syria is to gain control of that actual pipeline in a new world order effort there. So, friends, I don't see them, I don't see this war stopping at all. Uh, there's, it's not going to stop. And from the information that I'm hearing right now, it's fixing to get much worse. 
No wonder why the prophets of old saw biblical prophecy, what would happen here. No wonder why he said, you are not mindful of your rock and you have forgotten the God of your salvation. Because all they're about is fighting for greed. This is what it's all coming down to. For a major New World Order Silk Road initiative, but it's about the oil and gas. Very troubling indeed, friends. What will come out of this at the end of the day? I don't know. Uh, it could turn into a nuclear war. I don't think it'll be a total devastation. Uh, but I do believe that it'll be to also, as the other New World Order agenda is, is to reduce the world's population of people. So I don't think they really care about whether or not they use nukes or not. But listen, we're going to be sharing on Patreon uh, some information I think that'll be very helpful in the event that this turns really bad. Uh, so I'm going to share some of that insights with you guys. We won't do it here on Israeli News Live. Don't need to get into all those type details here. Uh, but over on patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live, we'll share some of those insights uh, with you. Uh, I will say you one thing though. If a war does break out, keep in mind FEMA in America will become refugee centers for displaced Americans that are survivors of some type of attack on the mainland United States. I wouldn't go to one. Think about that. We'll be sharing those type of insights with you on Patreon. So join us there. Hopefully I get that out tonight. I apologize as well about our Shabbat broadcast. My wife has been very sick here this weekend. So I've kind of been tied up with those issues there. I was unable to put that message together for you. But uh, hopefully either, if not later tonight, I'll try to definitely do it by tomorrow to share those insights with you over on Danoon Institute. Uh, so those of you that would like to hear that broadcast, we will not air it here on Israeli News Live. It will actually be aired on Danoon Institute, our YouTube channel there, D-E-N-O-O-N. -O -O I'll post that in the links below. Anyway, shalom, shalom in a world of ain't shalom. Talk to you guys soon.